Welcome to Hackett Plus. This video is an introduction to Unix and Linux. By the end of this lesson, we will have a good idea about what Unix and Linux are, and we will be able to install Linux. It is fundamental that you know what your goals are before starting the lesson. In this easy lesson, you have to understand what Unix is, understand what Linux is, to understand what a virtual machine is. The expectation at the end of the lesson is to correctly answer questions regarding this lesson. Do not worry, hacking sessions in safe environments will be conducted later in this course. You will have a lot of practical work to do, but not in this lesson. A good learning plan has steps to be followed. First, watch the video carefully. Watch it again and again until everything is simple and clear to you. Keep in mind that you can get help from tutors if something is still not clear. Then you have to complete the exercises. Do not forget to send them in as part of your certification exam. This lesson just requires you have a computer to watch the video and a quiet time to enjoy it. So if you have no previous experience, do not worry, and the video method you are using now should suffice. The very first thing to say is that Unix is an operating system. An operating system is also called an OS and it is a collection of software that manages computer hardware resources and provides common services for computer programs. Think about a man who decides to have a cup of coffee, which ironically is a typical action done by hackers when they are not typing at computer keyboards. It is his brain that decides to move the hand to take the cup. Our brain is like our operating system because it manages our resources. Unix was originally developed in 1969 by a group of AT&T employees at Bell Labs. This great group included guys such as Ken Thompson, Dennis Ritchie, and Brian Kernighan. During the same year, this creative group was not only able to develop Unix, but also the C programming language, which is the base of every modern operating system. Not surprisingly, Unix, whose first version was written in assembly, was soon rewritten in C. This OS has many great features. The first feature is that Unix is a multi-user operating system. This means it allows access by multiple users at the same time. Consequently, in Unix, many people can use the computer simultaneously. Think about a university computer where many students have access. The students are called remote users. They can access to the Unix shell prompt at the same time. If you don't know what a Unix shell is, try to imagine a DOS prompt or Windows command line. This would be a text command environment, but Unix is much better. Do not get me wrong. Another great feature is multitasking. In Unix, many processes can be performed at once. Possible synonyms of processes are programs or tasks. The player you are using now watching this video is consequently a process. Of course, running multiple programs means that you are sharing the computer's resources simultaneously, so there is a natural limitation in it. Another feature of Unix is that it is portable. Imagine having a good text in English and someone asks you to translate into German. Now English and German are the computer architectures. Translating is the porting process. Speaking a little more technically, we can say that two easy examples of different architectures are 32-bit and 64-bit. When you have a 32-bit software, you need a port to execute it at 64-bit. And Unix is quite easy port. But not everything was perfect in this fairy tale. AT&T made Unix available to universities and commercial firms, as well as the United States government, under licenses. Copies of the annotated Unix kernel sources circulated widely in the late 1970s, but Unix was proprietary software. That's why Richard Stallman, a visionary guru, founded the GNU project on September 1983 at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, also known as MIT. GNU project is a mass movement aimed at granting computer users all the freedom rights about software. Freedom rights are four. Freedom to use, freedom to share, 
freedom to study, freedom to modify. Everybody should use, share, study, and modify the software without any limitations. What a great revolution. Keep in mind that free software means software with freedoms, which is something more than just being free of charge. Don't forget it. GNU Project started to develop their own open source operating system, the GNU Herd based on Unix. Unfortunately, GNU Herd design model led to a huge waste of time and energy. Since 1990, they have been developing GNU Herd, and a stable 1.0 version has not even reached yet. Not really an example of efficiency. But very soon, open source communities we're very lucky to receive a wonderful Unix-based jewel from Finland, Linux. Since the first OS version in 1991, Linux got very successful very soon, becoming the choice of the open source community. Because it honors the GNU guidelines and its quality, Linux has become the chosen OS. To speak a little more technically, what was released in 1991 was the first sketch of an OS kernel. There are differences between kernels, but we can say that every kernel represents the inner part of the OS, and it is responsible for servicing resource requests from applications and the management of resources. We will go deeper about kernel during the next lesson. Now it is time to understand how we get ready to install Linux. The first three questions on installing Linux could be, what do I need to install Linux? Where can I find the Linux installation DVD? How can I install it? We will answer all three, but one question at a time. Let's answer the first question. What do I need to install Linux? You would need five ingredients. A good and possibly recent laptop or PC Keep in mind that you can install Linux even on very old computers, but it is better to have a recent one to fully appreciate the Linux experience. At least one hour, which is a good point because time is valuable. A good internet connection is useful, but not required. Patience, and of course, enthusiasm. You have four alternatives in installing Linux. Install Linux in a laptop or PC as the first OS. Install Linux in a laptop or PC as an auxiliary OS. Install Linux on a virtual machine in an existing OS. Install Linux on a different device, such as a smartphone. Every alternative has its positive and negative points, even the strangest one. But it is not time to list all. I hope you have already noticed the third point regarding a virtual machine. What is a virtual machine? A virtual machine refers to the virtualization concept. Virtualization refers to the possibility to run multiple operating systems on a single machine at the same time. Obviously, virtualization needs a virtualization application to install and to run on our computers. Whether they are running Windows, Mac, or Linux, or other operating systems. All the OSs that run inside the virtualization application are called virtual machines. Virtual machines are also called VMs. Practically, you can run Microsoft Windows 7 and Linux at the same time on your Mac OS X, all alongside your existing applications. Although virtual machines are using your computer's resources, there is no doubt that virtualization offers great advantages. For example, you do not need to buy many and many PCs to run simultaneously different operating systems. You can uninstall an OS with a simple click. You respect the environment, avoiding creating other high-tech wastes. In this course, we will use mainly virtual machines to simulate realistic environments that need to be hacked. There are many great virtualization applications. The most famous products are VMware Player, VMware Workstation, and Oracle VirtualBox. We have nothing against Oracle VirtualBox, but our choice is VMware. 
Now spend some time to download it and install yourself VMware Player for your current OS. It requires a registration, but it is free. VMware offers VMware Fusion for Mac OS X users. If you are on Mac, use VMware Fusion. Although it is not free, it is a great solution. Try to install it first without help. If you have problems, please get help from the tutors in the Hackett Plus forum. The second question was, where can I find the Linux installation DVD? Well, there is not only one Linux. Linux World offers many, many Linux distributions. Linux distributions, called also distros, are members of the family of Unix-like operating systems built on top of the Linux kernel. This means they share the Linux kernel, but they often include a custom installer, core software, and a large collection of software applications. Because of the free and open source community, there is a huge variety of distros. Some of them are focused in some areas, such as Kali Linux, which focuses on penetration tests, and it offers a huge quality of useful tools for any ethical hacker. Well-known distros are, for example, Ubuntu, Debian, Fedora, Mint, Gentoo, and Slackware. Which is the best distro to start with? Well, there is not a right answer or a wrong answer. We will start using Debian, which is quite uncommon, because it is usually considered an expert distro. But this will help us in understanding better how Linux works. The third question was, how can I install Linux? Up next, we will solve the third question installing Linux on a virtual machine. Now check the Hackett Plus's exercise PDF and complete the exercises for this lesson. I hope you've enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.